Well, there you have it. We have our first Yandere hero. <laughs> uh, that didn't quite go as dark as I was hoping it would go, but man, I think a, quite a bit of this episode was really well done. But this is my thoughts on episode 6 of Yuki as a Hero, the Great Monkai chapter. So let's jump into it. But yeah, as hinted by the end of the last episode, yes, this pretty much seems like a lot of this focus for this story, at least this segment of the story, is zeroing in on Chikage, who is unfortunately not acceptant of the unaccepting world of the heroes. And it's kind of one of those interesting aspects where I don't blame Chikage. At the same time, I don't blame the world itself. And at the same time, I don't blame the heroes. I just blame the Taisha. We can all accept that Taisha are the reason why everything sucks. <laughs> At least the Taisha gave them a chance, a fighting chance, but can't really ignore the fact that pretty much whenever there's something wrong, it's because either the Taisha don't want to explain things to people or the Taisha lie to people. <laughs> it seems to always come down to the Taisha in the end. But yeah, this episode really opens up with a viewpoint of the, I guess the beginnings of the press conferences for the people. And this is where I believe that it all kind of starts at fault from the Taisha. As obvious what they state in this press conference, or at least what Wakaba states in this press conference, is a promise to the people. And the promise that she makes is that the people can return back to their normal lives, and they don't have to worry about ever being affected by this t particular conflict anymore. We're going to take care of it, return to your normal lives, we'll handle it, you no longer have to worry. And then what happens is right after this, we have death, we have destruction happening as these cyclones, the effects of the war happening behind the scenes still affects the people. And so the promise they give over here is not kept. And I think that lack of truth to the people causes them to turn against the actual heroes. The heroes promise that we can continue on with our lives and we're still dying. Obviously, whatever they promise is not being fulfilled. They are now affecting us. At the same time, that's not me saying that I'm okay with what the people respond for. Like I said before, in my last impressions, it all comes down to social media sucking. <laughs> social media is terrible, and it's terrible in this world. As a response that people have with death and everything is that the heroes are failing, the heroes are terrible. What good are they in the fact that they don't see the struggles the heroes are going through? As we quickly jump forward back into our current time, well, I don't know if it's current time, but <laughs> following the fight that they had where they lost two of the heroes, Chikage is seeing nothing but hatred for them, even despite the fact that they've lost people. Even people on social media bringing up that we heard that they lost heroes, and that's probably why they're not having a press conference. They failed. They're terrible. They're useless. What's interesting is even despite me really kind of honing right in on the aspect that the story was going to go in the direction it did with Chikage essentially being full of hatred towards the people's response to their sacrifice, it went even further than that in two different directions. The first direction was really getting into Chikage and why she is so hurt by this response. As we find out from the, her beginnings in this whole situation, jumping way back to the point where the Taisha were accepting people into protection, she wasn't allowed to leave behind her mother and father. Her mother was apparently cheating on her father and apparently that guy died, so now she's back at home. The father hates the fact that she's there, but they can't go to the Taisha without bringing her with them. I'm not sure exactly why that was a requirement, but they're required to bring the mother too. And this obviously angers the father. And this goes even further because, because they were from this small village, gossip was crazy and rampant. And everybody talked about everything this family did, and that affected her because everybody's seen her as the daughter of the cheating mother and the daughter of the tax evading father and that she has this terrible family and she's somehow part of it. And so she gets a lot of this abuse and all this kind of stuff along with the fact that now she's a hero and people think that she's failing and that abuse continues and continues and they're just spray painting the walls of their house and putting up signs about their failures. But the other side of this as well is Wakaba's addition to the whole thing as... We obviously see Chikage is upset about what the people are responding by. She sees Wakaba as acceptant of it. And the way that Wakaba says this is that she says, we're not here to be heroes. We're here to protect this area. We're here to serve this divine tree. We're supposed to fight these vertexes. We're not here to be praised. We're not here to be a, a beacon of hope. And this upsets Chikage because she's liking the fact that she was a hero and that people loved her, where they never loved her before. And now they hate her. So she's right back to where she was before. 
But then here's Wakaba being positive on these broadcasts and everybody's praising her and this upsets her. And then on top of that, <laughs> it seems that Chikage believes that the only person that actually loves her is Yuna. So even when she goes crazy and she starts attacking random school children, taking all this bent up hatred for the fact that people are just hateful towards the heroes who are sacrificing themselves, Wakaba is the one that interjects. And then why, and why does he say that she's there? Yuna sent her because Yuna was worried about her. Again, the only person that seems to love Chikage and have some sort of bond with her while everybody else has turned against her, Wakaba turned against her because Wakaba doesn't understand her anger towards the people. They've lost their two friends and then Yuna's the only one. But then she also feels that Wakaba is taking away Yuna, her only connections. That's where we get the whole Yandere thing. We have nothing except for this one thing and I can't let you have this one thing. <laughs> Yandere insert. I didn't actually think it was gonna go the Yandere route. Um, I honestly, I guess I should have seen that based on the previous episode where when Yuna stood up and said that she wanted to be a hero on this, all this stuff and actually fought against Wakaba, Chikage was watching from a distance and just zooming in on Yuna. But we also see this whole scene where they're at Christmas and Yuna wants to be her friend and wants to play video games with her and all this stuff that she wants to make some sort of connection with Chikage. And obviously, again, Chikage had nothing else. But jumping back to this whole scene where Chikage goes after some school students. And I really, like I said, I kind of... This was the turning point. This was the point in which I was really looking forward to. Not, not that I want her to go on a slaughter fest or anything, but this is the storytelling that I was excited about. Because like I said, what I got hints from in the previous episode was a dark magical girl, like a an antagonist magical girl. Somebody that has the power of the divine tree and the Taisha supporting her, suddenly becoming the enemy and maybe still retaining the power from the Divine Tree. Maybe the Divine Tree doesn't see it as being bad that she's doing that. The Divine Tree might not care that she's attacking other people. That's what I was interested in. Can we have one of these heroes be an antagonist, be an enemy, be a villain? Chikage Kori is a villain <laughs> instead of Chikage Kori is a hero. That's what I was excited for. And so the moment that she went after those students, my mind went, this is great. But it was very softball. Like it it was very careful about it. It went so far as to, yes, she sliced at them. Yes, she cut them, but she didn't kill anybody, nor did she viciously harm anybody. So there was two aspects of this was that, that was kind of a letdown from this point was one, it wasn't as brutal as I was hoping it would be. Like this wasn't the pent up anger that I was expecting her to unleash. This was very, very, very minor stuff. And at the same time, I think they betrayed her poorly. As she's swiping around and angrily swiping at these girls, her voice projection never changes and it feels very off. And I've seen this before in anime and I'm not sure if this is just a Japanese thing. I always find it odd whenever you have a character that is slashing at something very angrily and they talk the same the entire time. It ruins the motion. I think before, I think another example I remember this being in is, um, Higurashi when they cry. Higurashi when they cried to this as well. Um, specifically, the one that comes to my mind is the moment that you have Shion or Mion, which one of the one of the two of them, I think they both have this scene technically in two different parts of the series, where they're grabbing the ladder and he's on the ladder and they're and they're shaking it and they're yelling about something. And even though their body is flailing around and they're angry about something, their voice is very monotone and very strict. It never changes tone. It never reflects on their motion. And I hate that. <laughs> and they did that here and it ruined the scene sort of for me. So I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed in the scene because I think this is a pinnacle scene and I don't think they portrayed it well enough. But despite that, this is exactly what I was looking forward to. This is what I was looking forward to because this is a response to exactly what they were living in in the time where they still had, like I said, social media. They had something that was still affecting them directly they were such iconic characters that were put up on billboards and put on the live streams to be seen as heroes. And then every failure was reflected upon them. And they talk about that. But yeah, this eventually leads to Chikage looking to go see Yuna. And Wakaba is actually there helping her rehabilitate. And they, for a brief moment, see her there, but she runs away. Later on, we jump to a scene where Wakaba is walking with Hinata. Which I don't know who Hinata is or if they ever explained who Hinata was. I think Hinata may have been a replacement to come into the team. 
or maybe a Miko that doesn't actually fight on the battlefield. But as Wakaba's walking with Hinata at some point, they're talking about the fact that they kind of wish that Chikage wasn't under house arrest and that she was out in the open. That way she wouldn't kind of stay bottled up in the room, which obviously seems to be an effect. I didn't even know they said that they, she was... <laughs> house arrested until now but apparently she, this entire time after she attacked these girls she was under house arrest but her mental state was the issue and even though she went on a tirade and all the stuff and snapped eventually she eventually texts or messages i think the taisha to say that she's fine she's rehabilitated and she's ready to go which i'm guessing at this point is probably that other side of her which we see a couple scenes throughout the episode there's this other side of her that's talking to her the entire time saying that you know, nobody will accept you, that you, these people are terrible. But I'm guessing this other side probably took over at that point. This other personality that is tired of this takes over. And yes, as Wakaba's walking with Hinata, time stops. I love this. This is a really fantastic scene. I loved how they portray this because the two of them are walking. And then at some point, Wakaba's still walking and Hinata stop. And the rain just stops right in midair. Really cool looking. I really like how they portray that. But yeah, this is the point which... The Vertex are here. Everything kind of gets taken over. And Wakaba, thinking that she's going to fight alone, ends up having Chikage show up. Like, oh, you, the Taisha lets you go? Yeah, sure. I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> this is funny because I'm was i just waiting for I'm just waiting for Chikage to attack her. Um, you knew it was coming. But it's, it's like one of those things, too, because like technically we know that Wakaba continues on because she technically wrote the book. <laughs> so you know that Wakaba is not going to get killed by Chikage. Uh, but this is the point which Chikage turns on Wakaba, obviously claiming that she's not going to take Yuna away from her. And uh, I wonder if I said Yuki this entire episode. <laughs> it's really easy to say Yuki Yuna. Uh, yeah, you won't take Yuna from me. That's where, like I said, we, we've fully established at this point we have a Yandere hero at this point. Chikage Yandere is a villain. But yeah, she fully activates her power. Countdown appears and she's able to summon like a whole bunch of like Look like Taisha people. <laughs> Look like she's summoning Taishas <laughs> to fight for her. But yeah, that's, that's kind of where we leave it. Right in the middle of a battle, Chikage is attacking Wakaba, obviously claiming that she's taking Yuna away from her. Uh, like I said before, we technically know that Wakaba lives on, so it's not as if she's going to beat Wakaba. But, I mean, no. Who knows? Big plot twist. Chikage is actually the one that wrote the book as Wakaba because she replaced her. But yeah, overall, fantastic episode. Like I said, besides my beasts on how they portrayed Chikage attacking the girls because like I said it both kind of was less significant than I thought it was going to end up being but also at the same time not portrayed well enough because again that that lack of energy behind her slashes there's something very important to be said about voice acting voice acting can take something that is minor and make it something fantastic I, I mentioned it here recently when I started playing through Corpse Party again how Corpse Party is essentially a like old 16-bit JRPG maker game, but you get so much emotion just from the voice acting. The voice acting makes that horrific, despite you looking at goofy old-school over-the-head video game graphics. And to not have that energy and frustration behind her voice while she's slashing at the girls, it removes a lot of that emotion. But yeah, either way, really looking forward to what's coming up next. I'm curious to see how far they take Chikage, if this is just going to be a fight between Wakaba and her, and then she gets beat, and that's it. Um, either way, really like the direction they're taking this stuff. And like I said, really getting this vision point from the beginnings of everything is really fantastic. So looking forward to more. I felt really bad for Chikage. I think that's the reason why I like this arc so much right now, is because essentially what they're doing is making a believable villain. There's nothing better than having a villain character that you understand why they are the way they are. And I think they pulled that off with Chikage. I understand why she was. She was beat around by a small village, and then she was beat around by a new society that should have seen her as a hero because of their sacrifices, but didn't. Instead, they spit at her, despite the horrors they were going through. So I understand her. I see where she's coming from. At the same time, I understand what Wakaba is going through. And Wakaba not really accepting what the society sees because she only sees revenge against the Vertexes, unlike Chikage, who doesn't really have a reason for being there besides being wanted. So Wakaba is getting her revenge, exactly what she came for. Chikage is not getting accepted. 
what she came for. But we'll see where it goes from here. Um, surprisingly, not that much Yuna, <laughs> but Yuna's kind of been broken at this point. So but yeah, that's my thoughts on episode six of Yukina is a Hero, the Great Monkey chapter. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below, comment, let me know what's thought of the episode, subscribe if you haven't already, share this video if you can, support us on Patreon or in this tips link in the description below. We thank everybody that does and you'll take care.